Okay, so hi everybody. Like um, Andrew said, I'm Stacey Cox with um, the Learning Enhancement Center. Um, I'm an instructional specialist with the Think Center. So um, tonight we've heard a lot about different technologies that can be implemented in the classroom. And one of the intents that we had with this teaching forum was so that you could take away a technology that could be implemented into your classroom as easy as tomorrow. Um, another intent that we have is that this is a these are technologies that you can implement with large-based classrooms that could also be scaled down to small classrooms. And I think that's what you've seen with the various technologies that we've had, we've had presented tonight. Um, but one thing that I want to talk to you guys about tonight is things to consider or think about before you start implementing technology into the classroom. Because I know that if you're not already using technology in the classroom, it can be scary. Um, and so there are some things that you might want to think through before you actually jump in um, into the deep end because <laughs> that can be really scary. So here's some things, a list of things for you to think about. So a question that we get a lot is when is the best time to implement technology into your classroom? And one thing that I like to say is or ask, is it a supplement to your instruction or is it a distraction to your students? Technology can be used for a lot of great things. It can um, it can be used to like, it needs to be used to be able to enforce what you're teaching as opposed to be the driving force of your teaching. Does that make sense? So it doesn't need to be a distraction to your students. If you have a lot of bells and whistles going on, are the students paying attention to what's moving across your screen or what they're getting to play with? Or are they actually paying attention to the content that you're trying to um, give them in the classroom? A second question that we like to talk, um, that I get a lot is how do you know which technology to pick? Because as you saw tonight, there's a variety of technologies that you can implement into your classroom. And this is not even scratching the surface of what's out there to be offered for classrooms. So how do you know what to pick? And I, oh, if ever asked that question, I come back with the question of what are you trying to teach? What are the learning outcomes that you have in your classroom? Does the technology complement what you are trying to implement in the classroom? So you don't ever want to let the technology <coughs> drive what you're doing in the classroom. It should be um, a supplement to it. Does the technology that you're implementing in the classroom enhance your learning objectives and outcomes that you've already predefined for your classroom? Um, the next question that we, we get a lot is, are you comfortable with the technology? You don't want to implement something that you're not comfortable with. You don't want to go into it and say, hey, let's just redo our entire curriculum because, wow, that's a lot. Um, I think Dr. Ewing said it best, like, start small, do one thing. If you like that, continue on and then build on. You don't have to redo your entire curriculum and implement technology all throughout. Um, do something that you are comfortable with and use that throughout the semester. Um, which leads me into my fourth and last point. Um, how are you going to assess and know that what you're doing is working for your students? So you need to have a game plan in the beginning to know if what you're using is going to work in the classroom. Um, assessment, we always assess what the students are doing, but we always have to have a mind on assessing ourselves and our own teaching strategies. And so what are you doing in the classroom to assess your own teaching strategies? And that includes the technologies that you're using. Um, a lot of, um, we've heard, like all three instruct, um, instructors tonight gave feedback from that they've received from their students. And so how are you gonna get that feedback from your students to know that what you're doing is working? If it's not working, does that mean that you're a failure? No. <laughs> Switch it up, change it, do something different. Find another technology that you are comfortable with. Now, just because your colleague next door or down the hall or however your offices are set up, just because it's working for them, that doesn't mean that that's the perfect thing for you. There's so many different things out there for you to be able to explore and implement. Um, you should get out there and look for different things that's gonna fit you and your teaching style and your curriculum and what you're trying to do. And it might fit your students better than somebody else's students. 